Here with men's hockey coach Bill Moore. First off, congratulations, coach, on making it back to the MIC playoffs. Number two seed. Huge weekend last weekend against Hamlin when you really needed it most. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a really, really fun weekend. Talk a little bit about uh, about the two games against Hamlin. You, pressure packed, if you want to call it that. You needed a win on Friday to get into the playoffs. You get it, 4-3 overtime victory. You need a win on Saturday to uh, to improve your seeding. You get that with a 5-4 win. Guys really came through. They did play really, really well. And, you know, we played hard. Hamlin played hard. It was a great series. Um, as you can see by the scores, you know, overtime one night, 5-4 the next night. But um, we were very fortunate. We worked hard. We deserved it. And, you know, we had a, a well-rounded game. Bob Kinney had a great weekend with three goals and three assists. And I think Mike Mazzano had one goal and four assists. It was just a, a very good weekend for Cardinal Hockey. You know, as you guys head into the postseason, and we've talked about this before, we've, we've talked a lot about Martin Gruss and the kind of season he's had, but he's really just one of the many cogs that you've had this year. Offensively, you're, you're a well-oiled machine, but it seems like just about every game, it's somebody else who's stepping to the forefront to help you out, and you're not having to rely on just one person. Yeah, it was kind of ironic because Marty and I were talking about that yesterday, how every single night it seems to be a different line that comes up with a big goal, and um, I think that's the true definition of a team. Other teams have a difficult time stopping us from scoring because the minute they take their defensive-type unit and try to play, um, take them out of the game, someone else is playing against a less defensive unit. So as long as we can continue to get balanced scoring and get some uh, production out of all of the lines, um, I think we got a shot. Let's talk about this weekend. You've got uh, Concordia on Saturday, 7 o'clock here at St. Mary's. No strangers to Concordia. This will actually be the fourth time you've played them. You just played them two weeks ago and, and, uh, and split that conference series. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the game. What, uh, what can we expect? What's going to be the key to the game? Well, I think that there aren't going to be any surprises because, again, we just played each other two weekends ago. In fact, Concordia were their last opponent because they had a bye the last weekend of the year. Um, I think what you're going to find is the team that can deal with the pressure and play at the highest level with pace is going to be the team that comes out ahead. Um, I don't think the game that you saw us play on Saturday against them is any indication of, of what we can do. We had a very poor game that night, not to take anything away from them because they played very, very well, um, but we'll be ready to go for Saturday. You know, if you look at, at, uh, at the playoffs now, for you guys, you have nobody on your team that's played in the postseason. Concordia has been there before. Is that an advantage for them, or how do you, uh, how do you approach the, the inexperience of not being in this situation before? I think years and years ago it would have been an issue, but with all of the experience that these guys have in playoffs playing junior hockey, um, everybody's been there before somewhere, somehow, and so I don't think it's an issue at all. I think um, the bigger issue is Concordia having to travel six and a half hours. If we'd have been flip-flopped, we would have had to travel the six and a half hours to go play in their rink. Second place in the conference, uh, a huge accomplishment for you guys. You look at the, the preseason rankings, you guys were picked to finish seventh. Great accomplishment for your team, but as you talk in getting to the playoffs, none of that matters anymore. You've got, you've got to start over and, and be fresh on Saturday. Absolutely, and I think you can go down the whole conference schedule and you can see games every single night, one goal games, overtime games. I, I, I think we had a phenomenal number of 20 or plus, 20 plus overtimes this year between the nine teams in the conference. So anyone can beat anybody any night, and if you don't come ready to play, you're going to be going home. You know, I think one of the things we talked about off camera a little bit, uh, it's always great to play at home in front of the home fans. You guys almost had a home atmosphere at Hamlin because of uh, all the alums and everybody that came to show up to support you guys there. Hopefully that can continue this weekend. It was unbelievable. I think uh, we must have had 35, 40 alums at the game, and... You know, everybody's excited about how things are going. And, you know, I guess I really, really credit St. Mary's for that because they gave me the patience to try to rebuild the program the way we thought it had to be rebuilt. And, you know, they could have cashed in on me three years in, four years in when we didn't prove the production that was necessary. But they had patience to let us rebuild it the way we want. And we hope right now that it's the foundation for a long time to come. Saturday night, 7 o'clock, you've got uh, the Concordia here, MIC Playoff semifinal. Good luck. Thank you very much.